Welcome to the very special 200th episode of Real Hawk Talk. I am Brian Nemhauser. You can find me on Twitter at Hawk Blogger. And you can find Real Hawk Talk at Real Hawk Talk very cleverly on Twitter. You can also find us and our burgeoning community at patreon.com slash hawk blogger. Tonight is a celebration of all of you and with all of you as much as is a celebration of just us having fun hanging out together for many years now. Uh, and so we've got a star studded lineup. We're going to have Mina Kimes be joining us just in any minute. Uh, Katie Nolan will be joining us. And Bat and Cleanup is a Joe fan. So we've got a lot to cover. We're going to be rapid fire through a lot of this stuff. We will probably not get to patron questions, unfortunately, tonight, but it's going to be fun. And we're really happy to have you here. And we want to thank all of you for your support over the years. And uh, if you haven't already, click subscribe, click the bell to get notified when we go live. All that stuff helps. Give us a, a five star rating. And um, welcome to Jeff Simmons at Real Jeff Simmons, Dana O'Gorman at Dana OG, and Evan Hill at Evan Hill HB. Without further ado, let's bring her in. Uh, special guest connecting to audio, the one, the only, Mina Kimes. Hello, Mina. How you doing? Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> it's going great. It's going great. I. We are very appreciative of you finding time during what has to be a, a very relaxing Super Bowl week. We have we assume you have nothing going on. Um, uh, how's life down in L.A.? It's good. I'm actually uh, we're taping our show out of Anaheim, so I'll be heading there soon. So you're catching me, though, uh, right before I have to leave uh, tomorrow. So, uh, nice. you know, it's uh, Super Bowls in L.A., but L.A. is so big that everything's kind of all over the place. So. Mina, I was just checking your Wikipedia page to brush up on some of your background, you know, because I like to, to, I noticed, you know, I knew you started investigative journalism. I knew like when we, you and I first talked on our podcast, my podcast, it was about Frank Clark and uh, his history when he was drafted and whether that matched up. Do you remember that? It's 2016. No, uh, 16. Okay. No, no. I just was trying to remember what year that they drafted him. Yes. Because uh, it, wow, that feels like a really long time. It ago. was a long time ago. You and Danny Kelly and I used to uh, do uh, prediction shows uh, before the Seahawks season. And I can't find any of that on your Wikipedia page. So I was just wondering, like, is that yeah. a, an editor's mistake or like your, your big history was on, you know, the Hawk Blogger Real Hawk Talk uh, podcast? Well, I think the way Wikipedia works is anyone can add anything. So <laughs> feel free to make some edits. I don't know what it takes to get them to stick per se, but uh, you know, the ball is in your court. I won't object. I certainly won't challenge the edits. So, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for that. So uh, what's going on for you this week? What is, what is on tap for Mina Kimes uh, NFL live? Obviously you've got a ton going on there. Um, what does Super Bowl week look like for you? Well, so I'm finishing um, my preview podcast tomorrow with JB Long, who works with the Rams uh, to cover that side of it. I already talked about the Bengals with Ben Baby, who covers them really well at ESPN, um, just kind of going through that matchup. And uh, then oh, I'm uh, on Around the Horn tomorrow, but from Wednesday through Friday, we'll be taping from Anaheim, uh, just kind of previewing the game, honestly, for the most part. Um, getting into all the individual matchups. Uh, you know, there's been some with all the coaching hirings and such, and it sounds like with Dennis Allen now, I guess it's over. Um, we've been kind of talking about those as well and the various, you know, quarterback trade rumors. But um, for the most part, we will just be talking about the Super Bowl, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, so you also are known as a Rams commentator um, and uh, – I just want to know if you've done what we talked about and effectively sabotaging their uniforms with itching powder for the, the Super Bowl, or is that not public knowledge? They're wearing the, oh, itching powder. I was going to say, I thought you said some, they're, ma they're making them ugly because they're wearing the white, the bright whites, which I thought was uh, surprising instead of the bone, the controversial bone unis. But uh, I don't, I don't really have a dog. In the, I mean, I, 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 I picked the Rams uh, to win just football reasons so we can get into but um yeah you know I I uh 
I just like seeing good quarterback play generally. So I'm just kind of, I feel like we got a good quarterback matchup, but we'll, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Well, we know that when you have comments about quarterbacks, it always makes the news. So we really appreciate uh, <laughs> that, that, that no one's going to question your, your thoughts about Joe Burrow or, uh, or Matt Stafford. I don't think this week. Um, so, you know, I know a lot of folks, I know we only got you for a few minutes. A lot of folks know you as a Seahawks fan and appreciate what you, you bring to the table there. Uh, what's your take on the state of the team? Like as a fan, what are you, what's your kind of well, like, yeah, where you're um, at, where's your head at with the Seahawks? Yeah. You know, obviously coming off an extremely disappointing season. I think with, for me, what I don't want is another off season of Russell Wilson speculation. Um, my, uh, and, and this isn't even as a fan, this is just as a commentator, you know, either you want to leave or you don't want to leave. That's how I feel. And I feel this way about Aaron Rodgers. I feel this way about whatever, any quarterback who's kind of agitating via the various, uh, you know, best mechanisms through which quarterbacks do these things. If Russell Wilson wants to stay and make a commitment to the team and I don't know, potentially even restructure his contract and, be involved in acquiring certain kinds of talent. I would love that. I still believe in him. He's obviously coming off of about a season and a half of pretty mixed play. Um, some of that injury related, but I still think he has the upside potential to be one of the five best quarterbacks in the NFL. I also think there aren't better options out there, frankly, for Seattle. So um, I would be pretty happy to kind of look at the state of the team and the pieces that are missing on both sides of the football um, with Russell Wilson as the quarterback, but I would also just like him to be the quarterback and to not have another off season of uh, descent. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a question for you too. And with or without Russell, because that is up in the air and it is annoying as hell. We all get that. It's like, make up your mind at some point. But I want to know what you look for when you look at Seattle post Pete Carroll. Now I'm not saying he'll get fired or whatever, but I'm just saying post yeah. Pete Carroll retirement, happy living in his condo on the beach somewhere. What, what does that team look like for you? Do you like the fact that he was such a defensive coach? Are you looking for something different? Do you want to go super young? Like the Rams did? What does the post Pete Carroll Seahawks look like to you? Well, I think it starts with whether or not Russell Wilson is the quarterback. Can like yeah. When you have a veteran star at quarterback, it kind of changes what you need out of a head coach. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a world in which you can have a player like, uh, you know, Russell Wilson with a defensive minded culture setter type coach and have things work great as long as um, the game management is there, the situational coaching is there, the clock, the pen, all that. And, and then also open mindedness to, um, a, a offense that takes the full advantage of the quarterback skill set and frankly some of the defensive changes that have happened in the NFL in recent years though I do think actually um that's something that Seattle has shown a willingness especially in the second half last season and kind of with some of the decisions they made lately to embrace but um if Russell Wilson's gone I, I don't even know what this team looks like I mean there's a few right. pieces that are players um that you kind of look at as the building blocks of the future but, you know, we've saw most of the stars of uh, the Super Bowl team have, are gone inside of Bobby Wagner. And you're looking at an organization where uh, there isn't much there. There's there is a young core, but there aren't very obvious building blocks. And one would think if they moved on from Wilson, you would use that capital cap space, whatever, to acquire those building blocks and start looking at the next phase. But it's just such a black hole at this point. Completely. Yeah, Mina, you you had a very good point this year on your show about the Seahawks drafts the last few years and why the team, the talent's gone on. We've talked about it in this show for years, so hearing you say it was really rewarding. So <laughs> a lot of us thought Pete or John, one of them might go in the offseason. They're bringing, it looks like they're bringing everyone back. Yeah. Wh what reason is there to think that things might change with their drafting or maybe that they might learn from these mistakes or should we just expect more of the same? I mean, regression, candidly, is probably the best <laughs> thing you can hope for at a certain point you, you start hitting. And, and I think like the latest draft jury is kind of still out on some of the selections and your Daryl Taylor's, your Jordan Brooks's, you know, um, D. Eskridge. I, it's hard to say whether those are successful or not successful to my eye. But um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, I, 
it felt like people finally started to understand, like when you look at this team and why they haven't, A, haven't reached the heights that maybe you, you would hope for with a quarterback of Russell Wilson's caliber, but also we had, had a terrible season this year. It yeah, really starts with the draft and that goes beyond the players selected. That's some of the trades, you know, you count like Jamal Adams trade being a draft decision, for example, um, just a lot of really poor decision-making. And um, yeah, you know, I think at some point, uh, that obviously has to change or the team is going to continue down the road. It's been going down. Some of these picks have to hit. Some of these free agent acquisitions also have to be really successful. Um, but it was always hard. I'm sure you guys have talked about this a lot for me to uh, look at the lack of draft success and say, well, fire John Schneider, fire Pete Carroll, because we've all been sort of, it, it's unclear who's making which decisions because of the unusual nature of Pete Carroll role. So I, you know, all I can do is look at the picks and say, clearly this hasn't worked out, but um, the fact that nothing's changed um, based on what has happened over the last decade or so isn't fantastic. You know, we know you've got to run one last quick question. We're going to be asking everybody tonight. Sure. Um, you go to a Super Bowl party <laughs> and there is one snack that's not there that you find completely unacceptable. What is it? What's the one must have Super Bowl snack when you go to a party? Answer very wisely here, Mina. This is a big moment. I'm wings all day, every day. I mean, I, if, if I honestly, if any kind of football, forget a Super Bowl party, any kind of football watching experience, if there are not wings there, I am so upset. In part because like there aren't that many situations. I don't know. I don't order like wings at a restaurant at, for dinner, right? Um, it's, I, it's a, like, I, I associate it. It's kind of like, I, I wouldn't have a hot dog for lunch, but if I'm at a baseball game, of course, I'm going to have a hot dog. I love hot dogs. Same as how I feel about wings. Like why eat wings when I watch football? And if I didn't have that option available to me, I'd be super disappointed. That is an acceptable answer. We appreciate that. Uh, Mina Kimes, uh, on ESPN, on Twitter, one of, if not the best sports journalist out there right now. Must follow on Twitter at Mina Kimes. Never caught flat-footed. Throws everybody back. Uh, give her a follow. And thank you, Mina. Um, good luck this week. We'll be watching. It was good to see you guys. Take care. All right. Take care, Mina. So we will be uh, welcoming Katie here in just a few minutes. Um, yeah. Mina, like, I don't know about you guys, but if we had more time, I I'm in awe of the fact she never seems rattled. Like people come at her from all shapes, sizes, and she just slays them all. Like, and she doesn't like, doesn't like to take her day to come up with what to say. It's like five minutes later. I'm super really? impressed. It's on another level. It's, it's another level. And you know, maybe what she is so, I mean, I think a lot of people know this, but she is truly like OG Seahawks Twitter, like, mm -hmm origin maybe it's after the dealing Oxygen. with us for 10 to 15 years that <laughs> you know she yeah. might be a product yeah. of her, her environment a bit so the mean streets of seahawks twitter prepared her <laughs> i mean yeah, we're all that can harm asses, anyone so it's so and true i would have loved to have known what she thought about what ryan clark said today i think I, that I, was, I was gonna ask yeah i'm like I'm maybe like, we need to tread lightly Russell. there but maybe i'll send her a little message and be so, like no Dana, <laughs> i'll say this I've been watching NFL live for a long time and I watch a lot, as you guys can probably tell, I watch a lot of football stuff and what they've done, that show was pretty shit in the last like 10 years. It was really boring. What they've done with their show now, it's, it's must watch stuff. I watch it every day. Now what Mina has done with Orlovsky and Marcus Spears and Laura Rutledge, who's really, really good. They turned it that show, which was crap for a decade into probably the best football show on TV. So it's really cool to see. And yeah, I, I mean, I was, it's not hyperbole. I honestly, I was thinking about it. I don't, there's not a sports journalist that I have more respect for than Mina period. Like she's smart. She's funny. She's well-educated. Like she knows what she's talking about. She studies the game. She listens. She's not like arrogant. No, like, no takes. she's really, really good. And when you did that NFL live show, I I'm waiting for her to talk. Like, I honestly don't give a shit what, you know, the other guys, Marcus Spears, sometimes, uh, you know, I like him, uh, I like him. but like Ryan Clark, I actually like, 
but you know, a lot of them. So do I. Much. All They're right. So used to just being talking heads. Yeah. Can I just say one last thing on Mina? Um, of course. When I was in college, okay, I was deciding what I wanted to do career wise, and I was nobody. And I had reached out to Mina blindly for career advice. And she took the time out of her day to reach out to me, email, conversate with me, give me career advice. She is amazing. She is one of the most, I, She's I respect fine. Her. She's fine, Katie. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Katie. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. I would have emailed you back too. You just didn't email me, you know? <sighs> Yeah, Evan doesn't know. Evan's very insular and in where he knows to go. If, if you if you were, you know, we have a lot of good things to say about you, Katie, but the one thing, you're not a Seahawks fan. So I know. I don't Evan know why I'm you. here, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Everybody, that is the voice of Katie Nolan, the one, the only, the Emmy Award winning. Oh, that's right. That's Katie right. Nolan. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it is so Awesome that we were able to get this together and have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining our 200th episode of Real Hawk Talk. Yeah, congratulations on 200 episodes. I, I plan to spend my entire time talking about that cover band that plays before Seahawks games. In the you States. took my freaking joke. Dude. I mean, like, my I God, say, it is I the want, worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, in I wanted the best you to world. know the only reason you're on is because I tried to get them on and oh they refused. God. So they you must were the be very fallback. busy. Yeah, they're very, very busy and hard to book. Um, and I can understand why, you know, really gets the people going an hour before the game starts. I don't think everybody knows what we're talking about. So just oh to fill God. people in, like, Katie, you were in Seattle uh, and we're at a Seahawks game mm-hmm. and happened to be there when there's this cover band that plays on the big screen before the game. And I think I tweeted out like, a video of it like what in god's name is happening and your tweet like was one of my favorite tweets remember what you said uh i feel like because when i saw your tweet the experience from my point of view was that we my boyfriend and i because he's a 49ers fan it was the seahawks 49ers game and we went to watch the game and we both thought like this was your pre-game thing <laughs> that you guys loved this band and everybody went nuts <clears throat> for him so then when i saw your tweet i was like thank god i thought you guys all loved this i think is what i said to you that is something along yeah. those lines and yeah. and that made me feel very good to have tweeted that because i felt like i had represented seahawks fans yes. properly because honestly i don't know about you I, I i send some mean tweets i don't always mean to and those guys are probably husbands, fathers, sons. Oh, sure, they you know. seem lovely as people. It was just a, <laughs> like a, a band that if they played at a wedding, you'd be like, okay, they're really into this. Exactly. It was at the game, and it was just covers of none of them were their own songs, which I mean, thank God. Uh, but it was just he was getting really into it and making these faces. And look, I wish I had that level of confidence. And that man, if he hears this, I hope he knows. You, I, who cares what I think about what brings you joy? But, yeah. um, but it is very funny, a very funny <laughs> It is not exactly what you want to intimidate the opposing fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, opposing we weren't intimidated at no, all, I'll tell you that much. Though so. you did win the game, so. We did, 2-0 Thanks, against uh, your boyfriend's way. boys. So uh, yeah. that's how it goes. Um, I want to catch people up a little bit. I know we only have you for a little bit, but I want to catch you up a little bit on what you've been doing. Um, you know, you had this amazing, uh, you know, podcast experience. And if you have any advice for podcasting, I'm sure oh, us and everyone else would love to hear it. Oh. Um, but most recently, you're doing um, Olympics coverage for NBC. And what I didn't know, and I find very odd, is that they hired the gold medal winning rhythmic gymnastics junior <laughs> Olympics winner. <laughs> to cover the winter Olympics. Like what's going on? Yeah. I mean, I really am more of a summer Olympics gal. Uh, no, it's look, I, uh, things ended at ESPN. I'm grateful for my time there, but, um, it just came to an end the way it is. You know, these last few years have been crazy for everybody with jobs, not just people who have platforms on which to speak about it. So shout out to you. If anything weird happened to your job in the last year or two, but that ended and I've been off like taking time off which is a very foreign phrase to me I kind of hustled my way into sports media and then they kind of keep you going and keep you busy so it's been a lot of work and then when I took those couple months off I've been doing nothing but play video games and try to learn how to slow down and you know spend time with my adorable dog and that wonderful boyfriend who loves the 49ers I'm sorry Uh, and then I you know was having these meetings a lot of things called generals where you just meet people at different 
yourself, which, you know, when you're in the midst of a depression is very hard to do. But uh, I had one with NBC. They mentioned the Olympics. And I was like, dude, I love the Olympics. I watch them every year. And they were like, huh, maybe we could make something happen. And it happened very quickly. And I'm, again, very grateful not to say that phrase over and over. Oops. Do we get a pause here? Oh, come on, Internet. That's unacceptable. A screenshot, That's, Jeff, is she up there in Toronto with you? I got a better internet right now. This is. <laughs> oh, poor Katie. Maybe, I had such a good maybe time. Maybe NBC uh, cut her off. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a grateful one too many times. For sure. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I don't know if you guys have watched it. Oh, there she is. Oh, there Am she I is. back? You're yeah. back. You're back. Oh, my God. Hotel internet sucks. It's amazing, isn't <laughs> it? It's very, very bad. It's what a was special I in type of hell. I'm here and I'm happy and I'm very lucky. And as soon as we're done, I'm going back down to the lobby to watch Big Air, like the finals with Johnny Mosley, which yeah. is the coolest thing in the world. It's just everybody staying in this hotel. Rebecca Lowe is down the hallway. Wow. It's awesome. Very wow. cool. You know, I have to give you kudos because I was watching a lot of your Olympic coverage. But I have to tell you, when you were doing the Olympic sports charades, your monobob, that was mm. fantastic. Thank I'm you telling so you. Thank you. It's a <laughs> new sport. So I'm cool. very excited for it because it's single ladies. And I think it's actually happening on Valentine's Day or Valentine's Day. It's perfect. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's television yeah. magic. I can't wait to see it. But thank you. I tried my oh, best. It was hilarious. I And that's what I think I love most about the way you cover sports is there's always a sense of humor to it. You know, we get bogged down in the you know, the overly analytical and that sort of thing. And, and the humor is, is so important. And I, I was laughing. All three of you were fantastic at your shirts. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I feel like sometimes we get a little too grippy about sports yeah. and we take it really seriously. And don't get me wrong, there's times when we have to stop and take it seriously. But, um, you know, the actual game itself, it's a game. We should be having fun and looking at the, the funny side of it. So thank you for noticing, Dana. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. What is your favorite sport that you like, literally, not just Olympics, like, because you cover so many I mean, are you a football girl or a basketball girl? So growing up, I was not dating. a football girl. Uh, no. Growing up, I was a baseball hockey girl. Those were my two sports that I cared the most about. But since working in sports, I would say the one that's most fun to cover, I think, is football. It's just because yeah. there's just a, so much information, which is when all you're doing is the secondary stuff like I do, which is like what was funny about this. The more information and coverage a sport gets, the easier it is to make jokes about it because the jokes will land because the more people know it. It. So it's like, I might have the greatest curling joke of all time. No one's going to get it because no one understands curling. So I think football is the easiest to work with. But my heart, like deep in my heart, I'm a mm -hmm. hockey. I'm a, I'm a rink rat. Ooh. I love hockey. I think it's the greatest. And you guys just got a team, huh? Yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. Supposedly. Just, just, call it, just, be, just be like Kraken Tacken. You should have a, a rhyming <laughs> podcast yeah. about Kraken. <laughs> We've got a climate pledge arena and, and all that. Um, I mean, what a name. I, I, you know, I get it. I'm all for the cause. It's just like, make it sound yeah. a little more exciting. I know. I, I, so I have a question for you as honestly, a, a, just a fan of your work for a while. So, I mean, you know that because I've, I've uh, tweeted at you a bunch about it, but I'm curious your perspective on it. You're an introspective person Ooh. and I'm going to throw a bunch of compliments at you. Just yes. relax. Take okay. them in. Don't fight okay. it. All oh, right. Yep. You're smart. You're funny. You Thank know your you. sports. Mm -hmm. You care about the sports. You care about people. You can do angles from feature. You can do an angle from, you can do serious. I've seen you do like really, you know, stand up in your seat kind of um, stories that, that make you think. Why do you think like the sports media industry has had trouble figuring out what to do you know that. what it is? It's because when somebody says like, what is it you do? I can't even really put it in a sentence. I'm like, well, I'm a host, but I'm not an expert. I'm not an analyst. And I think a lot of sports TV, because it's what has worked forever, is kind of, um, you know, I, I, what are you, an analyst? No, I'm a play by play. No, I'm a sideline. And they have these roles that, you know, there are people who are incredible at them. But as somebody who's been watching sports on TV for so long, I, I never really saw me on TV. So it was never something I planned on doing. I mean, I'm a PR major. I, I don't know anything about television technically, but I, I, um, I love it. I love sports and I love talking about them and I love making them funny. And I've sort of ended up in this place where, um, 
I had these opportunities and I was like, well, it'd be foolish for me not to try to be like, hey, this is me. And if you want a show like this, let's have it. So, um, so I'm try I tried and I understand, you know, there's like technical reasons. I want to host a late night show and late night programming on sports TV is mostly the only stuff that does well is like post event. You cover the event. So it's like an after show. Um, but then there's also reasons of just like, it would be a lot easier if I could just stop trying to be whatever it is I'm trying to be. I don't really know. Um, and start just, you know, getting really good at one thing, but, um, I've never been really good at any one thing. I'm just kind of good at a lot of things. And I, I, I like, doing it this way. So I'm, I'm sort of in this place now where the last few months I've been trying to decide, like, do I give up on the trying to do this or do I try it one last time? And if it doesn't work this time, then I finally go, you know what? Okay. Sports comedy, it's not going to happen. And I, I don't know the answer yet, but, um, I, the Olympics thing feels like I'm trying again and it's going really well in terms of my experience. I don't know if it's like people are loving it and it's crushing, but, um, I'm having fun doing it. So I feel like that alone is a really nice reminder after a couple of years of being like, this isn't as fun as it used to be. It's nice to just be having fun again. So I think the answer is it's my fault that yeah. they don't know what to do with me. But I also am like, I don't think I'm going to change. So I made a mistake. I should have said you're wicked smart. But oh, I, yeah, uh, wicked smart. I, I didn't say that. So um, I've got family back there in Sharon. So shout out to, to my fam. Shout um, out Sharon. Pat. Yes. That's right Absolutely. near the Pats. Yes. Um, so, the best team in the National Football League. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I was going to. So last comment on that last thing, and then we'll, we'll move on to a couple more questions. We'll let you go. Um, as someone who's really enjoyed listening to your stuff, honestly, I just want to hear you talk about sports, bring people on. Do you want, you want to talk about sports with, with whatever you want to talk about? And so it's amazing to me that someone that's got that ability that people don't see how to use it. So as a standing offer, anytime you want to come on and talk about the Seahawks, you know, we're here for you. Oh, thank you so much. That's, I, really I, I know that's it. going to be a, a popular thought. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. You know, I love the Seahawks. Look, I dated a Seahawk. I dated a 12 for a long time. He's a okay. wonderful man. And I, and we, you know, we still are friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a nice experience. Luckily it was after that Super Bowl. Cause I don't think we would have <laughs> made it through that together. I was um, at that Super Bowl. It was, it was rough. It was rough. rough. Um, so uh, my last kind of other question is related to your, your team of choice on the, the, the football side. So, mm -hmm. um, well, you know, you had all this time of the Patriots and Tom Brady just being what might be the best <sighs> dynasty that ever, ever is ever. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you think comes next? Like wh what with him now? Officially, officially retired. Yeah, right. I mean, what was that? I don't know. I don't know. But Whatever. if, like, if he's out, like, so far, Patrick Mahomes hasn't proven that he can be Tom Brady, although he's had some pretty good success. Not sure anyone else really has either. So, what do you think post Tom Brady Patriots dynasty NFL uh, might look like? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, it's look, Tom left. In, in lockdown, I think people are forgetting, like we had just started what was supposed to be two weeks of a lockdown. It was also uh, St. Patrick's Day, which is a, a blessed day in New England. Um, and so it, it was a shock um, to those of us who were in denial about the fact that it was going to happen eventually. Um, and, and since then, it kind of, for me, coincided with this journey of uh, things starting to fall apart in my job, uh, which has been covering sports. And so it kind of nicely set me up for this, like, hey, if you were to take a break from caring and go back to being a casual fan for a little, uh, which I kind of embraced of like, look, what if I tried um, other things? What if I developed a hobby? What if I watched other types of television for once? Because you know, if you're covering all sports, you're watching sports all night. And when it starts to feel like a job, that's my sock. Don't eat that. I love you so much. <laughs> Um, is that your boyfriend? My boyfriend, yeah. Sorry. Okay, just want to make uh, sure. You know, 49ers fans always getting yes, into the laundry. It was not surprising. At least um, he's not stabbing the sock. That's, that's so it's, I've, I've taken a nice break. You know, I'm still rooting and I was kind of actually grateful to the Patriots for kind of bowing out of the postseason this year. So I didn't have to, I would have felt like such a phony being like, go Patriots. I haven't really paid any attention to. Um, I don't know what the team's going to look like, but I do know that like 
we had some really good years. That's her drinking water. It's not anything weird. If you can hear her be like, <laughs> um, it's, uh, we had some really good years. I'm grateful for them. Tom was wonderful when he was ours. And, uh, and now we just see, I was kind of hoping Mike McDaniel wouldn't take the dolphins job. And then in a couple of years, he'd come when Bill wanted to be done, or if he wanted to switch to the front office, we could get him because he's my boyfriend's childhood best friend. And, uh, and I would have loved to have him be the head coach of the Patriots, but instead he went in our division to the dolphins, which I'm upset about. Well, considering how deeply invested you were in the Patriots this season. Yeah, makes, I know. Makes, really? Mac Jones, right. though, he could be good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, you guys, we have this conversation on our show a fair amount. Like, uh, Mac Jones could have been a Seahawk if the Seahawks had traded Russell Wilson last year. But that's mm, a Could have been a 49er if they used that pick on who they wanted to oh, use. Oh, do you on. talk about that, actually? Yes, yes, oh. yes. Yes, because when he dropped to us, I was like, oh, sick. This is going to be the greatest draft pick. And they're going to regret having traded up to what was it? Three to try to to get whoever, whatever. (laughs) That's awesome. I would hold that over my my SO's head forever. Yeah. Well, when if you were my fiance, I think I'd be a lot meaner about it. But until (laughs) I get that rock, I got to be like, no, it's totally fine. Mac Jones probably sucks. Right. That's smart. smart. Um, All right. Last question. This is an important one. you go to a Super Bowl party. Mm. What is the the hors d'oeuvre, the snack, the Super Bowl food that has oh. to be there, or you uh. are going to talk shit immediately to whoever you came with? Well, I mean, it, the reason I would, the one that I would talk shit if it wasn't there is like, if you don't have a bowl of chips of some kind, chips and salsa, like, what are we even fucking doing here? Yeah. But the, what's going to make me uh, tell every, am I allowed to curse? I just realized. No, I'm we're off now. We, oh, FCC no. Is, I think China's probably monitoring this anyway. Man, I was you- live on NBC today and I almost said the F word. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing my track record. Why you got to watch your folks. I just feel like mozzarella sticks are really going to elevate your, oh. your Super Bowl party. And, and don't get me those TGI Fridays, weird rectangular flat ones that you get at the supermarket. I want you yeah. to make a mozzarella stick. I'm sure that you can do it. So that's- I, think that's a, I think that's a Northeastern thing. Like the, like mozzarella sticks are, they're done well and they're very popular there. So yeah. um, that's- I mean, it's fried choice. cheese. What do you want? You know? I, oh, yeah. That, there's nothing bad there. Yeah. Um, Katie, where can people watch uh, your coverage of the Olympics? It's a very good question. One that I'm not really sure the official answer to, but I will say that I'm going to retweet all of them. So if you follow me on Twitter, this isn't just like me begging. uh, It's at Katie Nolan. You'll find everything that I'm doing, but I'm sure like NBC Olympics and stuff. It's all very up in the air. I'm doing the Today Show tomorrow morning. I have no idea why they asked me to do that. Um, but I heard you were gonna, booked on this show. I mean, I'm going like, to wake up early. Yes, that's it. They were like, wait, Katie Nolan from Hawk Talk. And I was yeah. like, yeah, 200th episode, baby. Very few people get this opportunity, but you are one of the few. It's an honor, are, an absolute honor. Absolutely deserve it. So before you go, can we see your dog real quick? Yeah. Myrtle. You've been hey, talking hi, about hi, her, hi. him. I got it. My room's a mess. My room's a mess. I was late today. Uh, here, look at them. Say hi. Say hi, honey. <laughs> Say hi, little monkey Beauty. girl. Hi, That's the content we want. This is my baby. I, man, if she wasn't here with me, I would be going nuts. But she keeps me saying she's the absolute best. She's Love a it. Dogs, Love we it. don't deserve them. They all, everybody says it, but I mean it. It's so true. Katie, thank you so much for coming on. It was, it was fun talking to you. And hopefully we get to do it again sometime. Yeah, definitely. Jeff, maybe you'll talk next time because I feel like I have no idea what you sound like. Say Brian told me I wasn't allowed to. You had to call oh, me. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. You guys are the best. Congratulations on 200. I've never listened to an episode, but I would. If I had time, I would. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> we, we've got at least five listeners. Um, yes. They've been really dedicated for, for 200 episodes. Shout out to all of your parents who are, yes. are listening. Love to all of them. No, you guys are great. And even if you're Seahawks fans, it's okay. I love you. And thank you for caring to have me on. And Absolutely. I hope the next 200 are even better. But can't be worse. So thank you, Katie. (laughs) All right. Bye, guys. Go USA. Watch the Olympics, please. Thank you. All right. Cheers. That's Katie Nolan at Katie Nolan on Twitter. Uh, Must follow. Uh, If you think that energy, that's her energy at like 10 o'clock at night. There's a reason she wants to do nighttime shows. Like that is just her. She's always on. It's totally genuine. Smart as a whip. Funny as hell. Is that her caffeinated or just normal? 
Normal. Well, I don't know that there's a much of a difference, to be honest. And <laughs> what we say, by, I just got chirped by Katie Nolan. That's exciting. You did. That's exciting. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you, she's like the Samantha B of sports. I, that's what I loved about her. It's what I loved about her show that she had for so long is that you could have the, you know, fans could be have the crappiest day and she would make you feel better. I love comedy and sports together. She's just one of my favorites. You know what is, I think we talk about wasted opportunity in teams right like hey we should have had more Super Bowls or the the Saints should have had more Super Bowls with Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers and the Packers or whatever like all these waste opportunities ESPN had Mina Kimes and Katie Nolan and they had amazing chemistry they like each other they're friendly the fact that there wasn't a Mina and Katie show that they did whatever the fuck they wanted to do Dude, two girls, ESPN would never do that. That would never happen. It's mm-hmm. unreal. It would have been. Would do the, they only would run them on like day, those daytime shows that nobody yep, watched. Absolutely. Like, that Just... show with the little levitard and. <laughs> Telling you. Pick them in a room, give them each a mic, let them talk about whatever like, the fuck they want. I can, I can totally relate with what she was saying about her career though. Like, obviously I was never near the talent of Katie and, but one of the things that I found from I work for mega media companies in Canada, they really do pigeonhole you in the way she says. And the mistake I made in my career in Canada, and this is probably hard for you guys to believe, is I was pigeonholed as a football guy. Mm. And in Canada, we don't have a team. So my career, I was always kind of in that. And to see that happen to her, with the talent she has and the presence she has, I don't think she's wrong. And like it, it happens where they, they want you to do one thing really, really well. Mm-hmm. it's unfortunate because she should she should be a star she should be like it's yeah. unreal to me i can't like because at fox sports she was she was on they were giving her a show she had the podcast i don't know it, it's it's crazy to me and it makes me I wonder like am i just like super weird like do I, well yeah yeah yeah. Not, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah screw you guys but like <laughs> but do other people not find her like funny and smart and like super talented? Like I she the stands way out to talk to me. Like, 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 I don't know. Time. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I, I probably have a very different view of this than the three of you, but I will just let you know that there is, there is a lot to this side of the room, only doing one thing, only doing it well, doing it a certain way. You know, she's got that goofy sense of humor that people love in movies, but they don't necessarily want to mess up their sports with it, you know, sort of a thing. And, and, and unfortunately she's just going to be a casualty of that, which is heartbreaking because she knows so much about so many sports. It's not like she just knows about football or she just knows about basketball. She just, she knows it all. And, and I think that I would hope someone would see that eventually i hope she doesn't give up don't give up katie we oh, love I you. Hope she, she, like you can make so much money on youtube right now or like there like yeah. you should be doing that like go away from those networks you can say whatever you want dana i guarantee you she's never going to watch this um so oh i know <laughs> no yeah yeah um yeah joe fan will be joining us here in a little bit uh and uh, i know everyone's dying to have joe Oh, you know, we Mr. Joe. Worst... How does Joe follow that up? Katie we saved Nina. the worst guest for last. I know. Oh, I mean, Joe. Joe. Should we just end it now? Should we just call it a night? It's tempting. It is. No, I think like... we need Joe and Evan one on one. I love you, like, Joe. It's kind of like for Katie going from this show to the Today Show. It's just like such a step down um, <laughs> for her. Like, I love how she just like casually dropped that too. Like, oh, I'm just like doing the Today Show tomorrow. Like, yeah. right. But like, then to say, I have no idea why they want to talk to me. <laughs> so self-deprecating. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah. yeah. I wanted to give her more crap about her 49er fan boyfriend. Um, yeah. He's, he's a comedian. Like, so they, she's also considered a comedian, which is weird. I don't consider her a comedian. She's funny, but you know, um, I don't know how two comedians, you know, how that works. Uh, usually need one funny person in a relationship and one person that laughs. That's my experience. Dana, which are you? Are you the funny one? Or are you the one that laughs in your relationship? Oh, kind of depends on the subject, to be honest with you. My husband's pretty funny about certain things, but then he doesn't get a lot of like the things that I like. So then I'm the funny one. Yeah, it's just kind of a mess. Well, guys, it, it was a great night tonight. Good to see all of you. Um, <laughs> 
for Joe. Yeah, time to wrap. Uh, we've had a great show. Uh, we don't want to let it go downhill, but oh, wait a second. Oh, there he is. He showed up. He, he's here. He showed he's here up. early. He's here early. I will give him, I, I told him to come a little later. But he is one of the FOS, friends of show, even though he is, look at that, wearing his Ooh. Sonics hat. He's waiting to turn that around. I retract everything. He, he, uh, he moved on down to Vegas to bet on himself. And uh, so far it's, it's, it's paying off. Um, it's Joe Fan with two N's, Joe underscore fan. Uh, that hasn't changed. And Joe, dude, it's been a minute, man. It's good to see you. What's up, y'all? I appreciate the invite. Congratulations on episode 200. I appreciate the invite. I'm very much a distant three in terms of where our, the guests are ranked this evening. I mean, Katie Nolan and Mina Kimes way up here, but I'm happy to be uh, to you know to get the late night spot here and uh, get the invite. So I appreciate y'all. There, there is, but from our from our followers, there is no distance here. Like everyone's been like, when's Joe coming on? When's Joe coming on? Mr. So Joe. you you have a special place in uh, Real Hawk Talk. Uh, I appreciate that. And you know what? I would go a step further. I think you are one of the most beloved Seattle beat reporters to ever work on the Seahawks beat. And I'm not kidding. Not even exaggerating. I feel like I get a new mention every single day saying, how much fucking money do we have to pay <laughs> Joe Fan to come back to Seattle? I'm not kidding. I don't know if you get it, but I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Honestly, like I, I appreciate all the love. And when you announce that you're leaving and people are sad, you're going like it does me a ton. But what's great in what I do now is I can still stay very connected to Seahawks Twitter, Seattle sports Twitter. I'm still very invested in what's happening. Um, and so it's it's not like you lose sight of it because you're I'm on another beat where all my energy is going into something else where you don't have the time to really spend on what's happening in Seattle. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, it's super fun to get the invite to come back here and talk with you guys. Um, and so, yeah, I, and I really, I, not just because you said all that and I really appreciate the love, but I, I have a lot of love for you guys as well. I mean, you guys crush it. There's a reason why you guys got to 200 episodes and people tune in every single week. And what I love about your guys' show um, is that you guys agree often, but you guys disagree maybe more frequently. And I really appreciate that. I mean, Seahawks Twitter is fascinating because people look at what's transpired really over the last five seasons. Everyone's got the same amount of information and watched the same games, but they look at everything through different lenses. And I think there are a lot of justified opinions on both sides of the ledger. I don't think it's super black and white, even though everything Evan Hill tweets is black and white. <laughs> He's a little bit borderline <laughs> psycho on like 95% of what he puts out there, but we love him for it. But it creates good conversation. I really love that you guys have this platform to where all of you voice your opinions, uh, where you agree, disagree, and it's all love afterwards. So I think that's what people love to come and listen to because there, it's not just an echo chamber of everyone on one side. Um, it really get they get a full bit of analysis that covers all sides of the scenario. So um, that's my appreciation for you guys and makes it fun to come on. You think it's all love after, but you should see the DMs. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, there is a cost that no. comes for keeping this show together. <laughs> That's why you have to have like a week in between shows to like let things yes. simmer for a couple of days. It's like a 48 hour rule. And then, yes. and then, you know, Evan and Nate will like find a way to like make peace and send the olive. We green. have a private group therapist that we all attend therapy. with. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see That's that. True. That's true. Jeff, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Joe. Um, Jeff, were you going to ask a question? But I had a question. No, you're still alive. I was going to ask how much you missed your tweets, but. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to be back on Twitter like a week or so to cause hell. So I'll, I'll be back soon. Uh, Joe, this is your first year away from Seattle professionally covering the team. We asked this question earlier of Mina just because she's obviously one of the OG um, fans, obviously grew up in Seattle. What's your current opinion on the current state of the Seahawks? Obviously a disappointing year by um, multiple metrics and standards, but that's kind of a loaded question, but I want to hear the, the fan side of you a little bit. My biggest fascination with this season is how much Russ's injury changed everything. And that's even something that you can, everyone has a different opinion on because there's a side of, the fan base that looks at that and says, if not for the Russ injury, it's a playoff team, maybe a Super Bowl team. My goodness, they they beat they beat the Cardinals decisively at the end of the season. 
where I sort of look at that and say, is it now sort of like an excuse for like a team that wasn't, in my opinion, really going anywhere to begin with? Like I look at what happened at the beginning of the season outside of the Colts game and a half against Minnesota and a half against uh, the Titans. They didn't really look all that good. And so you, you start going down this rabbit hole of, well, Russ came back early and he wasn't right. And they still were competitive even when Gino was there. And I get that. So if Russ doesn't care, maybe they were a playoff team. But in my head, I'm like, this was still a very flawed team before he got hurt. And so were we going to go see another season where they make the playoffs and lose in the first round and we have the same conversation over and over again? So it almost feels like everyone's like, let's run it back and, and do it all over again because Russ got hurt and had that not happened, things would have been great. And people forget about the, the loss of the Cardinals without Kyler Murray in the lineup. People forget about the Bears loss at home to Nick Foles. Um, and so that's, to me, where I think the conversation is really pivoted in an interesting way because I don't really have any different opinions than I did a year ago. I don't know how they're going to get, I don't know how they're going to get over the hump. I don't know what's going to transpire to where you'd say on paper, these teams are as talented as the Rams and the Niners. Um, so uh, two and O two and O. Yeah, sh sure. Two and O. Sure. I, I can't argue that. So I don't really know, man. I think they're in an interesting spot. I mean, they have to sort of bat a thousand this off season with all the cap space they have and all the draft picks they have, if they're going to run it back and be successful. And they just haven't done that, especially in free agency in quite some time. I mean, think about the money they spent on Akello that didn't even make it to day one. I mean, that's wild to me. You have a lot of that, a lot of BJ Finney's of the world. Well, that's because um, they had Trey Flowers. He's a Super Bowl player. They knew that. <laughs> and they just, they just figured they wanted to, they wanted to get to the Super Bowl, but they figured they could only get one guy this year. So they sent them to Cincinnati. Yeah, uh, I don't know what I make of this team, man. Like everyone's like, oh, they have fifty-five million dollars in cap space, and it's like, well, they only have like half a roster right now. Yeah, yeah. and they got to pay DK at some point. You know, I, I don't know, man. I'm fascinated to see what this. He knows. Is like. He knows. I, I'm gonna let you your follow up, but he knows. He he doesn't want to say it because he knows it's not gonna go down well. But you know, you've got your point of view. I can hear it. I've heard you on your on the Mitch podcast. He's great, by the way. If you don't listen to the the Mitch yeah, uh, with Brady. Uh, podcast they do the uh the no table with uh, brady and when they're not talking golf which i actually am also interested in uh <laughs> they're doing great there i hear your voice dude you're like you're selling you're straight selling Honestly. and i've been of the thought that there's no way they run it back given what has happened but now it feels like it's they're gonna run it back i mean unless they find a trade partner for russ and he silently pushes for it pete's obviously coming back john's obviously coming back so russ is the final straw and I've never thought that he's leaving. I'm going to stick firm on that until it doesn't happen. Then I'll eat crow once he shows up to training camp. But I just feel like we've seen this movie so many times. Like, what is the point? What is it? What do you point to and say they're about to get over the hump and get back to where they want to go? I just haven't seen it. And so I'm all for appreciating uh relevancy and being competitive year in and year out there is something to be said for that but as long as you're sort of accepting that the ceiling is not championship it's relevancy in playoffs but not really a contender I mean look how many blowouts we saw in the wild card round this year there's a very different there's a different group of teams that like legit have a shot and teams that are just there for a good time um and so yeah, man. I don't know. I, I can't wait to see what happens with Russ. Joe, I got a much more important question for you. <laughs> What's that? For this? Yeah. How amazing is your life living within driving distance of in and out on a day? Oh, it's distance? great. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm a huge in and out guy. I Three by three and fries well done. This Ooh, is my order. Fuck me up. I don't mess. I don't mess around, man. I don't mess around. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean this podcast to get sexual. Uh, Jeff, yeah. over to you. I'm just saying, Becky fan didn't raise no bitch, you know. So like, <laughs> I go all in, man. I, 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 if I'm gonna do it, if I do it, I'm gonna go in. I, you know, there's no protein style. There's no like skip the fries. I mean, it's if I'm gonna do, it, if I'm treating myself, God, I'm going. Joe, the you're my favorite man. I'm so sorry. That was amazing, Jeff. Back to you. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. So you made a big transition in your life the last year or so. What's been the best part and what's been the biggest eye-opener about moving to Vegas? 
Oh, getting into a new space and like working for a startup has been interesting and like trying to what's cool about being a beat writer is you have a very specific audience. Like, you know, exactly who you're talking to and those people know exactly that you're talking to them. So it's sort of easy to build out that niche of relevancy and like, and if you do it well, accountability. And I'll always be grateful that I had time as a beat reporter covering multiple teams. And I think that's why when I did uh, some uh, hosting on KJR, um, when they needed some spot spot duty, I filled in for Ian a handful of times. And I think immediately you sort of have a legitimacy to you um, and a credibility to you because you've been a part of the grind in the day to day with a team. Um, and hopefully people like what you had to say, so they, they want to hear what you have to say potentially about other things as well. Now it's sort of unique because I'm, I'm sort of talking to everyone, which in a way you're talking to no one when you don't have like a built-in audience and you're trying to grow it. Um, and granted, you're talking to sports betters, which is sort of everyone, and you know, everyone, but like there's a lot of content out there. And so it's really, it's, it's kind of just like plugging away and finding your footing in terms of what your voice is in that space. I told them when I got the job, I was like, I enjoy betting. I think it's a fun side of sports. It's a fun way to watch a game that you don't have an otherwise emotional interest in. But like, I never want to position myself like I'm a sharp and you should take my picks because I'm going to win you money. Like I'm happy that people are like, I'm going to take the other side. It's like, that's cool. Like I'm just an idiot throwing darts. Like the rest You've of the people. You've been doing pretty good I mean? though, like, haven't you? Or am I just seeing like, yeah, am I just seeing picks. the good stuff? It seems like you're, if people have been following you, they've been making money. I have made a lot of money in the NFL playoffs. I will say that the regular season was sort of an up and down adventure, but, and like trying to figure out how to bet in the NBA has been a nightmare. It's the hardest, but I've made a lot of money. I bought myself like three new pairs of golf shoes because I just crushed it in the NFL playoffs. So I treated myself a little bit. That's, I, I would say that's a ramble, but I would say the biggest transition is like, is what your audience is and like trying to capture that audience. Then I, I throw it to you in a second, but, but, uh, were you the guy that made that $29 bet on the exact score? Of- oh, what? The two leg exacto. Yeah. yeah. The fact that he didn't cash that out is ballsy too. Yeah. He's yeah. like, you know what? Let's just see. Yeah. Insanity. Roll, roll it forward. Yeah. All right, Dana, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I have a question. Uh, <sighs> I'm going to admit, I don't know a ton about betting and it's just not my jam. Neither I, do I. That's great. <laughs> That's the best part, right? Yeah, hey, you're going but to here's, win now. Here's what it's kind of um, about some current events are going on. So we have this whole Brian Flores thing and we, you know, and he, all the accusations that he made. I'm fascinated because it was an angle I hadn't thought of until I read about it on Twitter. The implication on throwing games or paying your coach to throw a game the implications it would have embedding and how that, that the correlation there would put a different type of pressure on the NFL. Um, Have you, has anyone else been talking about that? I mean, I would think that because now they're sanctioning these bets, that would be the biggest no, no, you know, of all, I I just think the pressure would be huge on the NFL. You know, what's sort of been fascinating to me is because of that, that's become like, the major sin outside of like the racial claims uh, yeah. that that Brian Flores has made. I and it sure. sort of makes sense. It's so much easier for NFL owners to attack the integrity of the game than you tweeted me on this. like social <laughs> issues. Yeah, yeah. God because forbid. that right. gets really uncomfortable really quickly. But if you're like cheating and doing something and making a decision to impact the outcome of a game, Mm-hmm. No matter how inconsequential like those games are, if they're not teams in the playoff on someone is betting on them. Mm-hmm. And you're right, Dana, with the league partners that they have now with the rise in betting, you know, you have to ensure that if someone's make, it's the same thing, like in a casino, there's no one more concerned about fair play than the casino. Sure. You can't have any sort of like shaving bets in the casino because otherwise your whole operation is doomed. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's interesting because, yes, it is a grave and serious issue, but it's become an easy thing to latch on to and sort of like dismiss the social claims and the racial claims that Brian Flores makes, because that one's that's so much more uncomfortable. Any owner, I have no problem saying, hey, uh, Stephen Ross, you're done, dude. You can't mm-hmm. illegitimize the game in any way, shape or form. Take your two billion dollars that you're going to get for selling the team and you're on your way. Much different story. So I, that's sort of, I don't know if I answered your question because it is a serious yeah. issue and, and the yeah. NFL will absolutely look into that. And that would be something if, if there was 
if there was some like Tim Donahue, the old NBA official who yeah. would, if there was any legitimacy to it and there was legitimacy, legitimacy to be found, I don't think they would sweep it under the rug. That'd be an easy win for the NFL of right. Boom. We're going to get this done like, quickly. That's it. You're like, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. And the NFL can say, look at us. We take action when something comes up. Right. It's actually, it's an easy win for them for sure. Yeah. It was just, it, it was an angle. I of course was wrapped up in the, the, the racial aspect of it and that a pl- that a owner would want that like, and then someone's like, that impacts millions and billions of dollars. And I was like, cause then it's like the end of season records and this team making it to playoff instead of this one, because they threw this game. I mean, it was like, it was fascinating to me because once again, I'm not huge into betting. So I hadn't even put that two together. And then I came to the same conclusion you did where it was like, Oh, this will be the easy one for them to lash on. And that's how they'll get, Oh, look, we took care of this owner, but they took care of it because of the betting aspect instead of the actual problems that they're having with the owners. It was fascinating to me. Joe, I thought your tweet on Eric Bianami was really interesting tonight. What is going on? Like what's your theory on what's going on there? I was worried about opening up this can of worms because like the last thing you want is like to start this firestorm of like, how dare you white man even. Yeah. I thought, I thought what you said was really smart. What did so, you say? Yeah. Inform I her. am. I don't really get it. I am a hundred percent on board with, there is a racial divide and inequality in terms of hiring processes. And I think it's not only that, but also how quickly minority candidates get the boot. Mm -hmm. Like I still can't fathom why David Coley got fired just so that they could get to the point of wanting to hire Josh McCown and then having to end up with taking Levy Smith, who is undoubtedly another stopgap coach, right? Unless they make some miraculous turnaround and make the playoffs next year. Like, okay, he was your stopgap guy, but like Houston's not any more desirable of a job now than it was a year ago. That doesn't make any sense. And then the Brian Flores being fired. I understand you got to be a team player, get along with your bosses, whatever, but like that's hard to justify as well. Coach, you uh, objectively overachieved in Miami. The Eric Bienemy thing is so I will absolutely say, and Byron left, which the whole thing that they, you know, sorry, we're not going to hire you because we're, we've hitched our wagon to Trent Balky. Yeah. weird um and you can go through a number of candidates and even former head coaches who deserve another shot um the eric Bieniemy thing feels different he's had so many interviews at this point that if he was the guy if people really thought he was a kyle shanahan sean McVay, michael or mike mcdaniel now uh matt lafleur type offensive mind I just want to believe he'd have a job and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is a hundred percent because he's black, but I just don't think that can be it. Maybe it's a, a tick in the wrong side of the ledger. That's the, the tip of the IO that, that sends the, it, the decision in, away from his favor. Very jumbled way to explain that, but you got what I was saying. No, but he's just had too many interviews at this point. And he's been 14. a part of this Andy Reed mm-hmm. offense. That's just churning out points and yards with a future Hall of Fame quarterback and Travis Kelsey and, and Tyree Kill, and it's this just juggernaut, he'd have a job by now. And I, you haven't seen necessarily, maybe I've missed this too, and I didn't put this out there on Twitter because he would say, you're an idiot, you haven't seen it. Maybe I haven't seen it, but it doesn't feel like there have been a huge amount of players or even Andy Reid himself or coaches who are saying, it is an absolute catastrophe that this guy doesn't have a job. I feel like I saw more support for like Rich Basaccia this year of, yeah. of Raiders players being shocked that he didn't get the nod because they loved him so much. You just, I just don't feel like you really see it. So I'm missing something, whether it's in his, obviously the checkered past and his issues, you know, with the parking attendant and run-ins with Colorado and how that his tenure there went down. That was a long time ago. And I still, even that doesn't feel like it can be a hundred percent of the issue. There must be something about how he interviews what people believe about his acumen or his true involvement in what's happening in Kansas city and how he would be a leader of men as a head coach. But you know, here's the thing, Joe. Yeah. I think, I think if Eric B enemy, I think if Eric B enemy was Sean McVay's assistant, he would have been hired by now. I think why, that's why did it, because he's in, because I think, I think what the part that's missing in your, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but NFL owners, for being a lot of them remarkably successful and a lot of them 
actually made their, you know, made their fortunes in one way or another that, 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 uh, prove their, their business acumen or whatever else are absolute idiots when it comes to hiring like NFL coaches. Like it's been like, if you look at the track record, how many NFL coaches last like four years, I'm not even talking about like the decade guys, like they, I mean, this, this is like one of, if not the most important role that you get to hire, you don't get to draft the people and you know, all that stuff. And they get it wrong over like, look at Sean Khan and, and fricking Jacksonville. You kind of said that off hand, but like, this seems like a pretty smart dude from all that. I, I mean, I don't know him that well, but from what I've read, <laughs> seems like a smart guy. He's hitched his wagon to trend bulky. Like someone's gotten in his ear and I don't know, as someone who's, who has watched powerful people get indoctrinated by someone who is a smooth talker, who says the right thing, who puts the right um, image forward. And then we'll just listen to them. Like, it's not super shocking to me. I just look around and, you know, we, we talk about the Seahawks, like, like we talk a lot about Pete Carroll and, and, and Russell Wilson and Josh Snyder. Like, Paul Allen was amazing as an owner. He was a great owner. And he, even with the Blazers, like early on, like he was super invested and, and the Seahawks didn't make all the right choices for sure. But there's a lot of people out there that are just doing stupid things and are, you know, so I don't know that that's kind of where I look at it. I'm just like, they think, I mean, Sean McVay, if you're the water boy, you're getting hired at this point, right? Got, the Seahawks got the one McVay that exactly. hasn't worked. Out. <laughs> I get it. I get everything you're saying. Again, something in my gut just tells me this one feels different. I hope Eric Bieniemy gets a job at some yeah. point and absolutely crushes it. I'm sure. not rooting against him in any way, shape, or form. I believe, and I agree with everything you just said. But this hit him in this specific case. And you also argue a lot of his interviews are probably sham interviews where teams already had. I mean, look at today or yesterday, he interviews the Saints, they already knew that Dennis Allen was going to be their head coach. So how many of those, any of those interviews are true? You know, it's also just Rooney Rule, Rooney Rule sham interviews. I don't know. It's interesting. Well, and the Dennis Allen things, I mean, look at how many of these – the guys look like they're just placeholders. Like, is anyone going to be a coach of the Saints and be successful in the next three years with the way their cap is? And, and where like, I think that's a terrible job. Sean Payton just, like, dipping on that cap situation is also oh, hysterical. Oh, yeah. Him just being like, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that's fuck out. You know what I realized, what topic I realized we missed is we should have asked Mina about the Andy Benoit hire. <laughs> oh, God, dude. You guys remember that? Like, it just like wiped from my memory. Oh. And we were, we were talking about hiring practices right now. And Andy Benoit, isn't he like assistant head coach to Sean McVay? No. What? No, he's a special I, he assistant. Is. Yeah, he's the special assistant to Jesus. Joe, you mentioned you think that, that you're still standing by. You think that Russell Wilson's not going to be back. Like, is that, did I hear you right? Is that what you're saying before? That, that's what you predicted, and you're going to stick with it until it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's it, all, it, it, it seems like he's, he's going to be back. I guess at this point, but I again, I I'm not going to I'm not going to go down with the ship as any good captain does. I'm going to go down fine. with the ship that I can't waffle now, and I will again. I will own it that I was wrong. Um. I was too. I mean, we, we, we've talked about on this show, all of us had different perspectives on, you know, who would be here, who wouldn't all that kind of stuff. And we did end up basically at where (laughs) expecting it to be what it's looking like it's going to be. But um, knowing what we know about this free agency group, um, there are a lot of pass rushers, alpha level pass rushers available, and there's probably more to, that are going to be coming out um, for cap casualties. You probably get Zedarius Smith. You might get possible Daniel Hunter. You could get a Cam Jordan from the Saints in the trade. Like there could be some pretty interesting r- rushers. And that is one position the Seahawks have shown that they are willing to go out um, in the past, not necessarily really recently, but in the past and spend money. Um, on at least tier one pass rushers free agency wise. Uh, if this, and I, I, I'm asking this question a little bit because I want to have some fun with you, but also just because I honestly want to know the answer. Um, let's say that they go out and they get a, a Von Miller 
and they get a also an interior pass rush. Let's say they get a, an Akeem Hicks. Okay, just two names out of a bunch that could happen. Um, super, you know, blue sky. What does that do for Jamal Adams and how he can play in this defense? I don't know, but I also don't think you can sign or not sign people based on Jamal Adams. I mean, you got to hope for the best, but if anything, you'd like to think that an edge rusher that commands serious attention on a snap to snap basis would help Jamal Adams. Right. I mean, you look at a lot of his pass rush snaps, he's not getting close to coming home. It's like, Hey, Jamal's coming block him. And like, all right, they block him. And it's like, that's it. You know, that's, I'm still floored he didn't have a single sack. I get that his rush snaps were were absolutely diminished. But the fact that he didn't get one, and there were very few times where he was even close, fascinating to me. It's because you weren't around to motivate him. Yeah. I don't know, man. That whole situation, and even after last year, I was saying it was an expensive trade. It's going to be an expensive contract. But, like, this is a legit dude. He's a freak athlete. He can He can get home. Uh, as a pass rusher, I believe he'll improve in coverage. And he just feels like just a guy right now, which is why I tweeted, you know, whoever you, you hire as defensive coordinator, now I know it's Clint Hurt, you have to find a way to get more out of him. Otherwise, I don't, there's no way the Seahawks get back to the playoffs and have success in the playoffs if Jamal Adams isn't a top five safety in football. I mean, given the investment you have there, and what he's done in the past, he was a first team all pro player in New York before they traded for him. So I get the like, see, I told you it was a stupid trade. Like it's an easy win right now. And it, and it will continue to be a win. And I'll take the L on thinking it was a good trade and even thinking that they should pay him and all of that. But he's not, I don't, I, I don't buy that he's regressed this immensely. So I'm not closing the book on him. And people think I'm a big Jamal Adams hater because of the Mr. Joe thing. Like I would have been one of like the biggest Jamal Adams stands since the trade, but they've got to figure that out. He's got to be a game changer. Like he's got to be a stud again, if they're going to be worth anything because yeah. he's already under contract. He's just, yeah. You're not going to be able to sign enough blue chip players with what you've got cap wise, you know? So. Who do you got to win in the Super Bowl? Uh, still going down with the ship. I've been on the Bengals, and the Bengals won me a ton of money. So I'm gonna continue to ride them. From your mouth to God's ears, dude. I oh, I feel bad. Very happy. Johnny man. Hecker is a buddy. Um, and I went to high school with him and played high school hoops with him. And you should want your friends to win a ring, which I do. I very much do. But I do have a Bengals Super Bowl ticket that pays fifteen to one. So. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> Money over friendship, my friends. <laughs> right, now, I heard nice. you had a 75 out on the course a while back. Have you uh, have you repeated that? 75. No, haven't gotten close either. Yeah, no, I shot a 75. And as it happens, I just jumped off a cliff since. So I had within one week, I had the best round of my life and then had to walk off the course because I had the shanks literally in the same week. So yay, golf. Yay, golf, dude. Yeah. Yay golf. <laughs> All right, Joe, one last question before we let you go. Um, you you go to a Super Bowl party. What is the must-have snack that's at that party? If it's not there, you turn immediately to your friend and say, what the fuck? Buffalo chicken dip. Buffalo chicken dip? Yeah. Tell us more. What is this? I'm not sure. Oh, it's I, delicious. I, oh, you've never had it. Some people call it crack dip. Is like a nickname I've heard for my friend makes. It's like, uh, it's like cream cheese. Actual cheese, chicken, like pulled chicken, and buffalo sauce. It's 10 million calories with every chip and every bite you take with it, but it's absolute fire. And when I think about that, I think Super Bowl party. So I'll go like there. Jalapeno poppers are usually like a must have. Um, yeah, I would say those are like my two. Like if those are there, I'm like, all right, we got it's, it's a good spread. We're ready to go. We're ready to rock. We're ready to watch. We're ready to watch Joey B. What are you doing out. for the Super Bowl, man? I got a bite. So I actually am coming back to Seattle on Thursday. I've got a wedding. I got some family stuff. I got to uh, check in on and then a wedding on Friday for a buddy, but I'm leaving Sunday or Saturday night to get back down here. Um, 
my buddy has this epic man cave in Vegas. And so he's having people over. I'm not coming back just for that. I didn't want to deal with awesome. staying up in Seattle, watching all day or trying to get back down here on Sunday before the game started. And then like get back here before the game started, before my show on Monday, just figure come back Saturday, logistically so much easier. So quick trip back home to Seattle, but uh, I'm looking, home, looking forward to being home for a few days. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you for jumping on the 200th episode of Real Hawk Talk, dude. You are a, a uh, key friend of show. People are loving everything, Joe, in the chat. We will certainly uh, hope to have you back on. And uh, where can folks listen to your show at The Win? Yeah, it's the Bet to Win podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, me and my host, Claudia Belafato, have a ton of fun. We, we talk ball we, we talk headlines but we also give out a couple picks every single show and uh it's a lot of fun again it's 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 new for me i'm still very much you know today was the first day i put out like a list of, of five college basketball plays that i spent time and diving into that world it's it's new it's different um but it's been fun i appreciate uh you guys still uh keeping me as a friend of the show and getting to come back on and talk with y'all it's always a good time and uh, appreciate everyone who's watching who still follows me on twitter and still kicks it and hangs out and um you know seattle's always home so you know i've i've, I've very much it, it's a cool thing with the job now i get to stay very connected to to seattle so and congrats to y'all um because 200 episodes is no joke and so um that sort of longevity means that that one it's good content people are listening but also uh, you guys have great rapport um and good conversation so um give my best to nathan as well um and uh but really you guys do a great job and it's been really fun to be a part of it and when you asked me to be on the night you know it's easy yes without question i had a full night worth of plans that didn't include (laughs) and i canceled everything i called my assistant and i said clear my schedule i gotta be on real hawk talk tonight so i lied there is one of our biggest supporters that is paying us to ask you uh do you recommend the over in the super bowl i actually played the under i got it at 50 and i played the under the Bengals have been a disaster in the red zone um, and their defense has been shockingly like very good in the red zone. Um, and so I expect, I mean, I played over three and a half field goals as a prop. I've played both kickers to have a field goal of 35 plus yards, yeah. which has happened for each kicker in all three playoff games. Um, and I, I lean on the under, I would wait though, because I think it's going to get bet back up. I think over betters are waiting for it to go down as it gets closer to game day, it'll creep back up to 49, maybe even 50 again. Um, so right now it's probably not a value. I think it's a bottoming out point. It's not going to go down anymore. Um, wait till Sunday morning and see if you can get it back up to 59 and a half or 49 and a half and for 50. And I like the under, which means it's going over. So fade me, take the over. Forget everything I said. <laughs> thanks joe dude have a good one and uh Great. good luck on the course dude appreciate it, y'all talk All to you guys right. soon enjoy the super bowl thanks for having me on congrats again on 200 episodes thanks man take care see you bud well uh that's a wrap folks on 200 episodes it's crazy right have you guys ever gone back and looked at the first couple episodes Oh, they're pretty. <laughs> Jeff and I, what are you talking about, dude? Jeff and I crushed those episodes. You guys remember, like, back in like the mid two thousands, when somebody would record their screen and there'd be like the hypercam, little like white black sign on the bottom right. That's like what I felt like I was going back to in watching those early episodes. MS it, was it, was, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was quality content right from the jump. It was kind of yeah. cool. You two just. Dis- discovered zoom when we were like kind of looking for us be kind of before zoom took off in the world like oh zoom. yeah that was an evan that was an evan discovery really like he was pushing it interesting there's so all zoom these other technologies that, thing. yeah google tried to kill us yeah we told yeah. google to get fucked <laughs> and we're still around today yeah before so. covid like I, no one knew zoom yeah that I'm, was I, good fun dude yeah, well, I mean, you're. I mean, Brian is right though. There's like a million different like ways you can do this, like in terms of live shows and live podcasts. And you know, if you really want to do it, you can figure out a free way to do it. But Zoom just makes it like really easy if you pay a little bit. So, all right, as interesting as that is, I've got to ask you a couple quick questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite guest that you remember that we've had on um, over the years? And it's okay if you don't, because we haven't done a bunch of guests recently. Um, actually, very recently, we've done a bunch. But 
this year we didn't do a ton. Um, I got one. It's yes, uh, we- it's Negan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan was so fun. Yeah. I, I have no problem being a fanboy. I'll take that. Um, Evan asked me like every week, can you text I'm like, I'm like, text that Morgan man. about coming on? <laughs> text him. Get him back on the show. <laughs> I mean, the guy does not respond to me anymore. He's like, if this people fucker. listen to, to uh, the show that we did with him, he's like a local kid, like went to L Dub, lived in Kirkland, you know, uh, huge Seahawks fan. So he's a great guy. I think that's my pick. Yeah, I can't top that pick, but from just purely football, this was like OG Real Hawk talk before probably audio around. We got Mike Garoppolo, Mike Garoppolo driving yeah. in his car, like going to training camp, and he tipped us off on the Sheldon Richardson trade weeks before it happened. Hmm. That was, He like hinted at it, and then I think Brian tweeted him later, like, was that what you were talking about? And he said yes. Like, that was pretty cool because we were like, we were just, we were on like episode four at that point. He's like a national NFL writer. He, he, like, I didn't even have to convince him to come on. So that uh, I found that one was pretty cool back then. Dana, you've been um, a more recent additions. I don't know how many guests we've had. No, this is the first time I've been on with a guest. So really? yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it has. I really, I really liked. Oh no, that's not true. I was on with Softy with like earlier, just a couple weeks ago. We were on with Softy. That was very fun. But I did, I did love the Negan interview. I'm still waiting for Duff McKagan. I'm just waiting, Brian. Anytime. I don't have that connection. We'll see if, if we can make that I'm happen. Work on that because that's the one I'll push it all out the way so I can be on with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've had Kenny Maine was a great one. Yeah. We, could, we yeah. actually couldn't get him off the air. Yeah, was like he, just, he was on for like an hour and a half, and I he was, was like, "Why do you keep trying to end the show, dude?" Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we there's been some really great guests. Um, other question I had: Do you have a favorite memory, like a favorite moment um, when you look back on the show? Can I go first <laughs> on this one? Yeah. So uh, we invited some crabs onto the podcast um, <laughs> after the Seahawks beat a specific team. That was going to be and mine. Oh, I'm man. just going to let you know right now, that was one of the most fun moments in my life. Not just the <laughs> podcast, in my life. <laughs> that was so fun. It was I very know. fun. It was very fun. I did. I was, it was just me and Evan at that point. And I did not know what I was walking into. He's like, just leave it for me. I'm doing an intro. I couldn't compose myself. <laughs> I don't know. It was one of the best things I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. People loved it. People loved it. Um, you know, I, I, I mentioned this last July when it, um, it had been a year since the first time that I had been on that I was still so absolutely shocked the first time you asked me to come on because in my head, I was so the polar opposite of what you guys normally did. I didn't quite get it. And coming on and you guys not being, you know, who I thought you guys were, which was a good thing. I thought you were all very angry, but um, so it was, it was really, that was just a really fun moment for me. And then getting to stay, I, I appreciate like crazy. I remember it. your first episode and the chat was just like, it was like roses being tossed. I mean, people <laughs> were so happy. I'm like, oh my God, please make her listen come to back. Do not make us just listen to these assholes. We need more Dana. That was an easy one. Brian's um, rant about the Rams a couple of years ago. Uh, I was pretty high on my list too. Or it, it was it didn't turn out great now that they're in the Super Bowl. But well, we'll just wait. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> rant, right? some, regardless of the result, that rant was one of the best things we've seen on this show. Uh, yeah. Well, that was fun. Um, wait, 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 wait. We cannot wrap this up until we find out about your Super Bowl foods. What okay. are your Super Bowl foods? Because I find it fascinating that everyone has said something different. So I want to know what you I was pretty surprised by something like, like I thought Mina was like chalk. Like that's what everyone I would expect to say. I'm I'm not a big wings guy. I'll eat wings, but like, I don't care if they're there. I actually will be more likely to go after the celery than I would be to go after the wing. (laughs) To be totally honest. That's a little concerning. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Look, to me, it's all about chips and what you're putting on them. And so you can either have pre-made nachos or you can have chips and like nacho all sorts of different crock pot nacho stuff that you're putting like that's it for me um yeah that's my go-to Jeff what about you 
I'm a big barbecue person. Dana, you can probably laugh at me because yep. you're from like the barbecue capital of the world. Yes, I am. <laughs> I need to make it out to KC, but I, I love wings and ribs and pulled pork. And mm. so for me, that's like, I don't need a ton of it. There's not great barbecue in Toronto, but Super Bowl is always a day I load up on barbecue and God I, I can't have a Super Bowl without it. God damn you for stealing my answer. I, I'm yeah. going to go with ribs, particularly. Yeah. Melt off the bone, fall off the bone ribs. It doesn't get better than that. My mm-hmm. favorite food. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, no, with that question, it's become barbecue. I mean, you can't you can't get away from it here. You know, I invited you guys. I'm like, Seattle plays in Kansas City next year. You guys should come. But literally, we'll have to spend three days eating because I'll have to get you to all the good restaurants. What's the best barbecue joint in KC? Oh, it depends on what you want, though. It just would be like oh, if you man. need burn ends, you have to go to Jack Stack or, or Oklahoma Joe's probably, which isn't now it's Joe's KC, but it used to be Oklahoma Joe's. But um, like if you want ribs, you probably should go to Gates. If you so it's like that it's like you have to kind of pick and choose and then if you're picky about your sides you have to start all over like it's a whole thing no wonder andy reed took that kc job he must be (laughs) (laughs) when that date comes out we need to solidify that trip yes yeah everyone come to kansas city we'll have a great time it'll be so in advance type thing that would be fun yeah i would gain a lot of weight um but it would still be fun so um all right well you know I, I think I'd be remiss if we didn't thank everybody that's uh, that's been a supporter of the show. Um, you know, we're now pushing up against 8,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. And um, I think we're supposed to start saying like smash the like button. Is that what people on YouTube say? Right. I don't know. No. What do kids say? I don't know what those kids say. I don't know. <laughs> shout out to um, uh, Josh and Will they, and Traven. What's that? Oh, we should shout out Trey. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, Will, Trey. They do a lot of behind the scenes stuff for the show. Hell yes. Yeah. So, so Nathan's not here. Obviously, one of Nathan's best moments was admitting that running matters. Um, I, I will never <laughs> forget that moment uh, on the show. It literally might be the only time in all the years, in all the conversations I've had with Nathan, where he admitted something was different than what he had previously said. <laughs> I honestly do not that. know of any other situation. Um, the man does not change his mind, but uh, yes, absolutely. Thanks, you, thanks to Nathan. Um, we've got uh, Will Cornell at Rain City Series and uh, Josh Cashman, the one, the only Josh Cashman, uh, who have helped with production and posting of the pods for a lot of that time. And recently, we've got our intern Trey Cole who's been awesome and doing all the heavy lifting and getting that stuff posted and getting the events uh, set up for the show. So we are super appreciative of all that he's doing. He's just got a full-time job. So he's doing this. And in addition to that, we really appreciate his work. Um, in the background, and Derek, Derek. Is, yeah. Derek's also Derek. been, uh, he's been on the show a couple of times. He has also written for the blog and given us a bunch of stats and uh, insights and he argues a lot. So we need, you know, he represents a specific demographic um, and, and perspective, and we wouldn't be anywhere without that. So um, who am I missing? Am I missing anybody? I don't think so. But yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we will keep plowing along and hopefully, God, hopefully the Rams lose. I just don't want ugh. And then we can get into the off season officially free agency. And I think it's going to be a fascinating off season for the Seahawks. And if it's not, then you're probably going to get two episodes between now and the rest of, you know, the season, because the Seahawks are not going to be an interesting team to watch unless they have a big off season and I'm betting on it. So um, with that, thank you all. Thanks to everyone here at real Jeff Simmons at Dana OG, at Evan Hill HB, and to all of you, uh, we appreciate you, love you, good night, and 